Hi everybody, um, today I want to talk a little bit about measurements in this video and maybe in more, I'm not sure, we'll see how far this goes. Um, generally, when you say measure, um, the first thing anybody does is they pull out a ruler. They go, well, how big is it? Um, here's the thing. Here's a dummy text block that was put together for who knows what reason. Um, and so you look at it and, and again, somebody asks you, how big is it? And you can pull out your ruler and you can give them numbers. Or the fact of the matter is, it's as big as it is. It's this tall, it's this wide, and it's this thick. Measurements, units of measurement can be very useful in an awful lot of circumstances. For us, they're not quite as critical as people might think they'd be, especially in the early stages when, again, they're coming in from the outside and they're going, well, of course, I need a ruler because I don't know how big this is. And again, it's this big. It is what it is. So the proportions of the text block are really um, what most of our other measurements are going to grow out of. Um, thickness of board. Thickness of board is determined by the depth of the shoulder, which is determined by the combination of the imposition of the book, the kind of paper there is, and what thread you choose, and what style of binding you're trying to do. Um, but most everything else, um, somewhere here I have a piece of binder's board that maybe under, was, was under the cat. So you go, squares. How big should the squares be on a, on a book this size? This is my hand, so you give you a rough idea of how big it is. Um, Frank Mowry, uh, the very important binder of the 20th century, um, wrote something once that really resonated with me when he was talking about something similar. And the phrase he used was the educated eye of the book binder, but you know, you can kind of widen this to pretty much anything else you do. Your eye, if your eye is educated, you can see or you can make informed decisions on are those squares too big? Are those squares too big? I think they are, given this context, I would pull it back, you know, and you go, well, I think that looks pretty good, you know. Um, Foredge always needs to be a little wider because as the book functions, forage, forage square shrinks. By the way, if you're new to this, the amount of board that projects beyond the edge of the text block is called the squares, which you probably knew, but I'm going to be redundant here. So anyway, so in fact, um, for so much of what we do, rulers and units of measurement are less critical than they might be, as I said before, in other circumstances. So here I've got, just because I said that, so here we've got a ruler um, broken down into inches and metric millimeters and centimeters. This is a typographer's ruler, so you've got inches, and then you've got six and 12 point picas, which is the, as you probably know, the, uh, the most general used unit of measurement in typography, the point uh, these are points uh, are one seventy second of an inch, roughly. Picas are either six or twelve points. Okay, so there's that. So um, what happens is, if I were going to put the most useful measuring tools on the stone here, the first one I would put down is a strip of paper which is about as dirt simple as you can get. The next would be a good pair of dividers, followed by your ruler, all right? If I were going to instead make the distinction of the most used to the least used, I'd flip these two guys, because in general, I use the dividers more than anything else, but the strip of paper is 
can be incredibly useful for, for a whole lot of things. And Mr. Ruler comes, you know, comes in third, but that's okay because sometimes it's necessary. It's just not the, the main tool that I use on a daily basis. The main tool would be, you know, the dividers. Um, with dividers, you can... Now, these are, these are relatively recent sterrets, and they don't work as well as the older guys, um, but that's just the way it is. So if I wanted to, if I needed for some reason to step off or to, to transfer the dimensions of the width of the text block, there it is. Okay. Um, little little uh, ad here. Um, one, of the, one of the main reasons I, I really like the sterrets is they have the, the quick adjust here. And then you just do your tweaking afterwards. So, uh, again, this spring is a little weaker than my old ones, which are under a pile somewhere upstairs. One of these days I have to find them. Okay, so anyway, so dividers come first. You can do the most with them. If you have, um, let's pretend that I need to find the placement of... Um, sewing stations on a spine. Here's the height of my text block. Kettle stitches. I want five sewing stations. I want the bottom panel. So these will be raised cords, so you want the bottom panel to be a little bit hair bigger. Um, so all I need to do, two, three, four, five. There's the distance, so I can make this a little bigger. One, two, three, four, five. That's too big. One, two. I can live with that. So, all in the matter of about, let's say, less than a minute by far. There are my sewing stations. Again, this is an initial, you know, mark out. But um, I would normally have take a piece of stiffer board like two ply, mark this out on it, and then that remains, you know, throughout the job. And then once you've got your sewing stations, um, the end papers need, you know, need to be pricked on either side of of the cord. So you got there, there, there. There and there. Again, this is real rough. You you know you would work maybe a little more precisely, but uh, that's it. I mean, it's not a it's not an earth shattering problem. Um, tubes in the the tube video, I used a pair of dividers to to you know uh, score score the tube, transfer the measurements and score. Um, and that's going to bring us to why a piece of paper is useful. Because again, with a piece of paper, you can do the same thing. Um, you know, there's, there's a width. Here's my text block. Oh, look at that. Okay. So there's the width of, you know, the width of my, my text block. If I need to transfer this, I can transfer this. If it's bigger than the you know the spread of my dividers, I can just use this directly. I tend if I'm going to be transferring dimensions um, from if, if I'm going to be using this and then I'm going to need to transfer the dimensions, I instead of working directly from the the strip because your your line you know has a has a finite thickness, I will transfer that with the with the dividers because of the fine prick that you get from dividers is a little more precise than a, a drawn line, especially if you're using a pencil that isn't totally sharp. Um, okay. And uh, the other, two other things about a strip of paper is that a strip of paper enables you to measure the width of a curved surface, which can be very important. Like if you're, again, if you're measuring for a tube, if you're measuring for a spine stiffener, if you're measuring to center um, a title, Okay, I mean, I'm going to show you that next, but 
I mean, the easiest thing to do here, is you wrap your strip of paper around, assuming you've got good shoulders, mark shoulder, mark the shoulder. There's the width of your spine. Again, I would then use my dividers to transfer that to a piece of, you know, stiffer paper like cardstock for the, for the spine stiffener. Um, if, let's pretend, this is, let's pretend this is the final width of the spine, and I've got a title, I've got my typeset, letter spaced, very important, Okay, how do I center that? You can, what I do is I would letter space it first and then make a, uh, a, carb, uh, a carbon paper impression of the type. So here is, you can just gonna pretend, here's the, where's that, good. So there's the width of the word. If I take it, and measure it from one side. Then all I need to do is split the difference. And so it will run from there to there and it'll be centered. Make sense? Again, if you need Let's, let's say you're working to a spine and you need to establish a center line. Maybe your text is gonna, gonna run you know, up and down in a single line. The mind-bogglingly complex way to do this is to fold it in half. There you go. Transfer that to your tech, to your, to your, your cover. Um, so you can see that this is you know, a very, very useful way to, to transfer and to transfer, to, tra to transfer dimensions without going through the intermediate step of taking the distance, translating it into units, and then marking with the units. And then, you know, you're, you're kind of working around. Well, anyway, um, so... I'm assuming that everyone knows how to use a ruler to measure, so I'm not even going to bother about that. Um, but there are a couple of, uh, of useful things to think about when you're working on your bindings. Uh, if I think of something else, I'll make another video. If not, we'll move on to something not totally completely different, but we'll see what we got. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if you have questions or if anything isn't clear, let me know. And I hope to see you again. Um, and everybody, thank you very much uh, for, for looking at these videos. I really hope they help. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.